In the high Middle Ages of Europe, the nobles were the backbone of medieval warfare. They were mounted warriors with shining armor and major political influence. These aristocratic warlords were known as the Knight, and these are the stories of five interesting knights, some real and some mythical. Either way, each one of them are legendary figures in history, whether their deeds were good or bad. What better way to start than with the simple story of an archetypal knight? Gilbert de Clare, son of Gilbert, was a descendant of William the Conqueror of England. He was but a simple knight. At 16, he became Earl of Gloucester and Hertford through his marriage with Joan of Acre. In his service, he fought through many Scottish wars, often serving in the English high ranks despite being so young. He served under Edward II, who lacked the proper skill to lead. When Gilbert criticized him, Edward called Gilbert a coward. Knights were always eager to prove their honor, so he led charge against the Scots the next day. Surrounded and separated, it is there he was tragically killed. Rodrigo Diaz was a legendary Castilian knight, also known as El Cid, which is Lord in Moorish. He was known to history as one of the greatest knights to have ever lived. Under Ferdinand I's death, his sons went into war with one another. Having pledged his loyalty to one of the princes, Cid reluctantly fought with Sancho II of Leon and Castile. He fought against the other princes as well as the Muslim kingdoms in Al-Andalus. His series of successful campaigns would come to an end though, as Sancho II was assassinated. Power went to his brother Alfonso VI, whom Cid helped fought against. Because of this, he was exiled, and from his exile, he fought for the Muslim kingdoms of Zaragoza, gaining reputation as a great military leader. His reputation grew so high, Alfonso stuck up his resentment towards Cid and welcomed him back to his kingdom. He would later rule over a society that supported both Christians and Muslims. Saint George, an Eastern Orthodox cardiffract, became the patron saint of all knights, despite not being an actual knight. He was based on a Roman cavalryman in 303 AD, Lydia. You may know him as the legendary dragon slayer. An evil beast tormented the people of Lydia, and Saint George's holy crusade against the evil dragon was a metaphor for the triumphant of good over evil. He saved the princess offered as a sacrifice to the dragon. His struggle against the avatar of evil made him an inspirational figure for generations to come. Robert Guizard was a Norman adventurer known for his conquest of southern Italy and Sicily. Born to a Hautfield family in Normandy, he became Count and Duke of Apulia and Calabria, thanks to his brother and small victories of the campaigns he fought. For the next four years, he lived as if he was an Elder Scrolls character, which is to say stealing everything he saw while no one was looking. He held the title Viscardus, which translates to cunning as a fox because of his thieving habits. When the papal army was forced back by the German emperor, Robert came out of Calabria and decided to fight. He spent two years conquering every bit of Byzantine land in Italy. Pope Nicholas II recognized Robert as the Duke of Apulia, Calabria, and Sicily, for which he swore his loyalty to the Pope in return. He was so ambitious in his quest to conquer Byzantine lands, he campaigned against Constantinople itself, one of the greatest cities of its time. This of course would lead to his downfall, as his army was struck by a pandemic before his campaign even came to fruition. The Prince of Wales, Edward Woodstock, better known as the Black Prince either due to the color of his armor or due to his reputation as a cruel warlord, was the eldest son of Edward III of England. He would grow up to be one of the finest warriors England has ever produced, an intelligent tactician and an avid jouster. He was married to Countess Joan of Kent and inherited Aquitaine through his father. He charged valiantly against the French forces, torching as many villages as he could. He would continue to fight against the French in the Hundred Year War until a peace treaty was signed between England and France, during which Edward focused his campaign towards Castile to help Pedro I reclaim his throne, taxing Aquitaine with brutal force to fund his campaign. This ended with catastrophe as Pedro I was unable to pay for the knight's service. When Charles V of France declared an offensive against Britain, Edward was obliged to fight despite his worsening health. 
he ordered the execution of thousands of men, women, and children in France, which granted him the infamous cruel reputation of the French. And those are the five stories I have to tell.